Church of the Redeemer on this, the second Sunday in June, uh, in ordinary time, as we call it. We're glad you joined us. I invite you to open your prayer book if you have one, uh, pull up uh, your iPad or phone, our bulletin, and join us to worship the Lord. Our opening hymn is hymn 525.
Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went out to his house in Gebeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall unlike for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and he came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely, the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's out keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring for him. For we will not sit down until he comes here. He sat and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
At once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of shrubs and puts forth large branches so the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father 
and the power of the Spirit into our day. You remember, every time we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we're calling on the Father to bring the kingdom of Christ into the world and into our lives and into each of our days, yesterday, today, tomorrow. When Jesus talks about the kingdom, he says poor people will rejoice and have enough, and sick people will be healed, and people whose legs didn't work will start running marathons, and blind people will see as surely as if their cataracts had been lifted. Prisoners will find freedom, and justice will happen all over the earth. So what have you planted? The kingdom of heaven is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle for the harvest has come. You plant things, so do I. Even if you never shoved a seed in a pot or planted a garden, each of us plants things. If we have children or teach children, we plant values and education into those children, knowingly or unknowingly, Knowing is much better. We plant attitudes in our own hearts. We can choose, even when we feel mean and low, to try and rise to an occasion and not share that meanness, but take the trouble to be kind, to care, to listen. That is a kind of planting of the habits of our hearts. We plant or share in at least the weeding or not planting in the culture of our workplaces. We can call out something that cuts too many corners or isn't true or isn't fair. We can name what is. That also is a kind of planting. We can take trouble to welcome people we don't know when we're on our home ground and to make them feel warmly welcome and be interested in them. Where did they come from? Why are they there or here? That also is a kind of planting. We can pay our bills and maintain our houses. That also is a kind of planting. It affects our community. We plant when we keep our minds alive and don't fall into ruts of thinking that we never re-examine. We plant when we watch our health and see our doctors and follow instructions for medications and regular exercise and good diets. That too is a form of planting. We plant good seed when we stay in touch with our family and our friends and try and find ways to see what is good in their lives and name and bless that. That is a kind of planting. Remember, being in the body of Christ, you're part of the priestly people. And one of the job of priests is to bless and name what is good. We plant when we participate in the community around us, be forces for good, advocate for fairness and justice. We plant when we vote. All of those are kinds of planting. We plant when we pray and read the scriptures daily and listen weekly and be mindful of the larger dimensions of God's life in our lives. We plant when we worship God daily 
and here in church. We plant when we live as if having the most money and the most status and the most power is not at all important because we're part of the kingdom of Christ where power and money and whatever status it is that others seek are not important, but where humility and moderation and even need are spiritual goods. That is a kind of kingdom planting. Finally, we plant when we look at death as a temporary state that we respect but do not fear because we have planted in ourselves the words of Christ and his life and his food and his drink are planted in us and we can see how it is growing up into a real harvest in our hearts. Day by day, weak, barreled on top of a wheat, every spring, every fall, every winter, every summer. How are you planting? What do you plant that will really last? What are you planting that will make a harvest spring up? that God will bless and rejoice in and that it will feed your soul. What are you planting this year? Amen. we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, Victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those, For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and the needy. For the peace and 
unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your, for your mercy and strength. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Sunshine. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. O Lord God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please have a seat and a few announcements. Um, this Sunday we are returning uh, with the bishop's permission to communion in both forms, both the bread and the wine. We will are permitted to have communion in separate cups at this point. So there will be a table where you can have a small cup of concentrated wine and take it after you have received the host and then put it down again. Um, no one must do that, but you may. I'd like to ask those of you who are pledging members of our parish or those of you who give regularly to please uh, keep your pledges up and current. We uh, changed our software during May and we have uh, quite a few people who have not given, perhaps because they couldn't give online, but I would ask that you make a special effort uh, to get your pledges current. We got all the way through the pandemic so far, but this was not a good month. This uh, morning we will be having the, uh, a new class on the letter to the Ephesians. Uh, there used to be a book by a man by the name of Phillips, Your God is Too Small. I think if you've ever wondered about uh, the cosmic nature of Christ, a letter to the Ephesians is a wonderful place to expand your mind on who Jesus is 
and what God intends for us when creation comes to its fullness, uh, the new creation, that is. Family Promise, uh, which serves the uh, homeless families in Irving, has contacted us and said they are returning to their regular schedules. They want to challenge you to sleep one night uh, somewhere other than your own bed, perhaps on the couch, perhaps in a tent outside, perhaps in your car, to get a sense of what it's like to not have your own bed. And uh, there's a long uh, amount of information in your bulletin, which you can read, but I'd like to remember that we have, we will share our rotation with our Presbyterian brothers and sisters starting the first week of July. The gift shop is open and has some new items in it. I hope you will check them out. And I want to ask for our worship team, does anyone have a birthday that they wish to remember? Seeing none, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a sacrifice to God.
those and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day, and remain with you always. Amen.